Hey everybody, Mr. BKNX here, and I'm joined by... Admin Cliffjumper. And Admin BH. And we are here to discuss Episode 6 of Avatar The Last Airbender, Imprisoned. Now a fun fact about this episode, it's the first one in the series where we see all four types of bending used, not counting the opening sequence, of course. And I think this is a really solid episode, and I'm going to throw it over to Admin BH. What do you think of this episode? So yeah, I, I would agree with you. I think it's a really solid uh, episode. I think one of the major factors in it is that it's the first time we see the effects of the Fire Nation on like a city or town before the gang gets there. So it's just nice to see that um, kind of like world, world build um, that's kind of like infused in into the show. So brilliant. So I really like that part of, about this episode. Um, I, like you said before, I like the, how the four bending elements are used. I love the fight at the end. I think that's one of my favorite fights in book one, surprisingly. Um, it's just so well choreographed. And um, there's, a, there, there's a lot of smaller things, but I guess um, on a larger scale, it's a really good first Katara-focused um, like episode because it kind of shows her unwillingness to kind of you know not help people who are like defenseless or need help and that's something that like comes back in multiple episodes later down the line so it, it just really it's really nice seeing the first real katara focused episode because four was kind of more Sokka and five was kind of ang so six was given more to katara and um yeah um for the major stuff um so it's just a really solid episode overall probably not one not one of my favorites um but I think it's a really good book one um, episode, a lot better than uh, King of Omar. Um, Cliff Jumper, you want to jump in? Or you yeah. Can't, um, yeah. Um, I'll I'll say like everything that you just said is I pretty much agree with. I'll be honest, you know, like this episode, like it's not one of my favorites. It's not one of um, it's it's so much better than the last one. Um, <laughs> And, like, I'll, I'll talk about why I think that way. But, um, yeah, just, I really, I'm, I'm just sort of a broken record with this. Like, I really think that it's just a really solidly plotted episode. Like, there's not a moment wasted. I love that the episode, like, showed, like, this is, this is, like, one of the first few times, or at least early on, where we see them, like, f like, really fighting the Fire Nation, like, up close. Like, we've seen it. And we see it more, but like this is the first time I feel we really see like much more combat against yeah. like um, the Fire Nation. Like we've seen in the first like two episodes, but like it was, it's not as much. And I don't know, it just felt like, like it was just an all out war. I love Katara's speech, I love her character development, um, I love the way these characters play off each other. And that's pretty much it. Like, it's a really good plotted episode. The thing that I really, um, the thing that I really, really, really like about this episode is uh, how good the animation is. Like, it's just, it's not, it's not that the animation takes precedent over the story and the characters and stuff like that. But I just really, there is some really, really good shit in here. Like, there are some really detailed drawings um, that I know for a fact were uh, animated by Ki Hyun Ryu um, who would eventually go on to be one of the major directors for The Legend of Korra. Um, yeah, it's just there's a, it's just a really big jump in quality, I think, just from a production standpoint, from episode 5, The King of Amashu to this episode. This, this one is just it's night and day. It's night and day visually. Like it really. Um, the sound design I thought was better in this episode than the latest one. Um, it's just really solidly plotted. There's not really much else I can say. Like, it's just a really good episode, but it's just not one of my favorites. It's not one of the ones where I can really tackle and get into, like, really bite into it really deeply. But um, it's really good. Uh, I guess one other thing I could say is I really like the idea that like when Haru and Katara saved this old man from like the collapsing mother, um, he 
he's actually the one that like rats them out to the Fire Nation. I just think that that's like really smart writing. Um, it's, a, it's a good way to progress the plot, and it's you just don't see it coming, and it it just grays the world out a little bit. Like it, it's not really the Earth Kingdom working together with the Fire Nation. It's not at all, but it's just the idea that this old man from the Earth Kingdom is so scared, like probably for the rest of his village. That he's willing to sacrifice this kid who shows his earthbending abilities to the Fire Nation in case, just to stop everyone else from getting hurt. I just think that it's really smart. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about the episode. Yeah, it's just I, really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess one way I would almost describe it is it's certainly not like the best episode of book one, and it's not where I would like. I would recommend people obviously start with the first three episodes, but I almost feel like if you want to show people like sort of the, almost like the quintessential of Avatar being Avatar, or especially like a good book one episode, this just really does a great job of showing in a simple story that you don't need like a ton of background before to understand, just like the mix of, like, some really funny comedy with, uh, like, character growth and, like, a dramatic story and, like, the really serious topic of, like, when you get to the prison and these people are super depressed that they've, you know, they've lost all hope until Katara comes and, uh, shows them the way and they stand up. It's, it's almost, it's, it's pretty sad to see almost, like, people getting broke in this way. And... Yeah. Also to mention, um, it's even like without re reach. This is why I almost like call it a quintessential like standard episode. Is that it doesn't reach like the highest heights, but like the different animation you see, and like like of the sunset and the sky and like uh, mm -hmm. just some of the clever little things in the episode. It just shows you like sort of like it's elevated above what a standard show would do with this sort of, like, escape from a prison plot. Uh, and one more thing I want to mention is I really like George uh, Takai, or Takei, however you say his name, as the warden. I think he does a really good job as that character. Same here. Yeah. I love his performance. Yeah, something interesting about this episode, it's, like, the first one where we kind of see that, like, um, how, like, people are being, like, restrained or being controlled. Because in this one, it's, like, very physical. You know, uh, the Earthbenders are physically restrained by the Fire Nation, and like later on in like you know the Bossing Say kind of arc, is there's like the mental, um, you know, restraining and mental brainwashing, and then like in Book Three, you know, we're getting a little, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but like in Book Three, there's like the whole blood bending part, which is like literally like an actual controlling someone's body. So it's kind of, I don't know if I'm stretching it a little too far, but it's kind of like setting up this whole sort of idea. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. To like control some how how far do people go to or what means yeah this is the first time we see like, how yeah. the world could have an effect on people yeah and and how it breaks kind of people down and this one is probably the kindest uh way of doing it i think yeah. the latter two are a lot more uh, evil and a lot more sinister even though this is really bad um yeah so i just found that in, that, that interesting uh rewatching um yeah i agree yeah. <laughs> okay. There's not really much else I feel like yeah, I can say. I feel about like the it's 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 really it's, it's a really good like sort of Katara focused episode, and I also yeah. like how like when Haru gets captured originally, like how like Sokka basically consoles her about, it, and he's like really nice about it, and just sort of the clever plans they use, it it just shows their different their ingenuity and adaptability to the different situations. And, I don't know, just overall, in, like, all the departments, it's not the best, but it's just a, just a really damn good Book One Visit to Town episode. Yeah. Uh, anybody have anything else to say? I guess, uh, um, I, I guess just, like, ending it on, like, Katara's mother's necklace is the first time we kind of see it uh, mentioned. Um, so that's kind of, like, cool. Um, it, was, it, it definitely oh, yeah, has its true. own story throughout Book One. So, um, obviously Zuko getting it now, um, and I, I really like how Zuko ends up with it, sort of. Oh, that's such a great yeah, that's cliffhanger, that's what yeah. I, no, I want to yeah. say. Yeah. Cliff jumper, cliffhanger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say really about this episode. Just a, just a really solid episode from book one. Yeah. 
All right. Well, everyone make sure to uh, come back next time for Episode 7, the first part of Winter Solstice. And feel free to comment what you thought of this episode below, subscribe, all that good stuff.